Hi, my name is Devin Murray with Smurzel. I am here in our Technicum Training Center located in our North American headquarters in New York. And today I want to take some time to talk to you about a common safeguarding issue, which is the actual wiring of a safety system. So going through a, your guard door monitoring devices to the control panel to some form of a monitoring device such as a safety controller or a safety PLC. And as you can imagine, the more doors you have on that machine, the more time it takes in actually installing that system. You may use options like a T or a Y adapter, which will decrease the cost aspect from it in a installation time but it will increase the cost aspect from the component side. Well, today I'm here to introduce to you another solution from Schmerzel, which is our PFB, or our passive build box. And this is used with our safety rated electronic devices. And if you're not familiar with our electronic devices, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel to take a look at the uh, key features and benefits of those safety rated electronic devices of the Pulse Echo and RFID technology. Um, one of those options being the SD option or the serial diagnostics, which is an output that gives full detail of that switch status over a protocol such as Ethernet IP, Modbus, can open, Proofy Bus, etc. Um, just one option, um, just one feature for those electronic devices. Uh, but you can connect those electronic devices directly to the PFB via one of the M12 connectors on here. And by doing that, you maintain the safety level of those components of that system. So you will maintain the highest level, which is that performance level E from ISO 13849 or that SIL level 3 from IEC 61508. So if you connect those safety rated electronic devices to the PFB, you'll notice that at each one of those four connectors there are two LEDs and the top LED is there to let us know that that internal fuse has not been tripped. So each one of those four connectors has a internal 1.5 amp fuse protection. The bottom LED lets us know that that guard door is closed and we are receiving the safe outputs from that device you will see that there are some dip switches and the dip switches are there to configure the PFB. So depending on if you have one through four devices on here, you will configure the PFB for such. And if this is the first PFB or the last PFB in a system, you will configure the dip switches as such. So the first or the last, how many PFBs can we have? Each PFB can connect up to four devices, and then you can expand on that. Depending on if you have a locking device, which will draw more power, or a non-locking device. One PFB can take both locking and non-locking, and for a system, for just purely locking devices, you can have between 10 to 24 devices, and that depends on which locking device you're actually using. Some do draw more power than others. Uh, so, if you just use a locking device, you can have 10 to 24, which is about 3 to 6 PFBs. If you're not using locking devices and it's just pure safety sensors of the electronic type, uh, then you can have up to 36 devices, which is about 9 PFBs. And if you have any configurations which will require more locking devices or more uh, uh, non-locking devices or mix match that's not listed inside the mountain wire instructions, give us a call and we can determine if there is a configuration possible for that. The numbers that I just mentioned, the numbers that are located inside the mountain wire instructions are, the, are taken into account maximum cable lengths and just one power supply um, at a 10 amp rating. So if there's other things that you find that you may need for an application, give us a call. Um, looking at the other connectors for the PFB, uh, you'll notice that there are three more down here. This connector here is the IO signal. This goes to a PLC, for example. Each safety device connected to the PFB will have an output. So just a, for this version, a conventional 24 volt PMP output saying that the, door, the guard door is closed or that the guard door is open or the guard door is within range. Some of those features and benefits for the electronic devices. So 
This is an eight pole cable for the IO signal, uh, two uh, connections for each device, the in and out. If it is a locking device, you will get that lock signal from this uh, cable, so the IO. So you will have a locking device at connector number one, for example, or a locking device at connector number one and three. Okay, so this IO signal takes in the output from the safety device and also gives the locking signal if you have a locking device there. The last two connectors down here are a M12 4 pole and this is the power connector and this will give power to the PFB as well as the electronic devices that are connected to it as well as the two safe outputs for the system. And this last connector here, this last M12 4 pole will connect to the next PFB if you have more within that system. Some things that come with the delivery of the PFB include some labels. So because you can have uh, one, two, 36, or maybe even more devices connected into your system, it's good practice to label what is at what connector. So uh, connector number one, you may have an AZM 200, connector number two, you may have an RSS 16, so forth and so on. We provide a nice, easy, easy labeling system. Uh, also within the delivery are some end caps and these go over any unused connectors and as you can see on that cap it is a slotted head so you can screw that down further. The last thing in the delivery is a cover for the dip switches. We do provide uh, screws to tighten that cover down or if you prefer uh, tamper resistant screws you can use that as well. Uh, so, installing the actual PFB, you have a mountain hole on the top and a mountain hole on the bottom. It is an IP67 housing, so you, it will withstand the industrial environment. Um, the size of it, it's uh, the size of some smartphones. It's going to be the same thickness as a common safety controller, so about that 22 and a half millimeter uh, width the actual dimensions are there at the bottom of the screen. Um, the only other thing you will need to install the PFB are the connectors. But what are you actually connecting? You're connecting a quick disconnect device at the guard door directly to a M12 connector at the PFB. So you are already saving tremendous time and in the uh, installation time and in the cost aspect. Uh, I mentioned the SD option for the electronic devices. So this model that we've been looking at so far is for the conventional diagnostics. We have another model for the SD option, and it's just two part numbers. You know, just two part numbers, keep the part numbers at a minimum, uh, just like the installation. For the wiring, just to see how easy the wiring is, I encourage you to look at our uh, videos number two and three that goes over the wiring for the conventional diagnostic PFB and the wiring for the SD option for the PFBs. And I thank you for taking the time to view this video. If you have any questions at all regarding the PFB or applications regarding the PFB, please give us a call or shoot us an email. Thank you and have a safe day.